So on our 20 year anniversary right now, I'm getting like blown up with, congratulations, it's amazing, you've done such a great job. I'm like, I did a great job. And I think, well, it took an army. And I'll tell you, I think back to the very beginning and really where this started, and it wasn't me working hard to make this business go. I think about my mom making my first little advertisement and posting it around her office, bringing home bicycles so that I could detail those bicycles and get them out. So as I'm thinking of all this gratitude, I'd love for you to think about this because it is so fulfilling to think about thanking someone who's been selfless, who's helped you get ahead, who's helped you shine, and someone who has really made a difference in your life. I so encourage you to reach out to that person, call them, email them, send them a text, send that note that you're thinking of them and that you're grateful for what they have done for you. Very blessed, Mama. Mm. Adam was challenging to put to sleep. Adam would just keep talking and talking and talking. He said, "No, wait, no, don't, don't go yet." And he would plan his future, whether it was the next weekend or the next month or the next year. He was figuring out different ways to make money or to be different. So in the late '70s my uh, parents moved to San Juan Capistrano and we moved into this house right here on Paseo Naranja. Right over this wall right here, you can see it's all nice and, uh, it's nice and grown over now, but I hung a, a sign over it said Bike Shack. And right here, just on the other side of this wall, there's a little shed, a garden shed, and I turned it into a bike repair shop and I would clean bikes and build them up and I'm doing these things and I'm you know eight or nine years old and it was like the greatest little zone ever. He liked to, to wash bikes and detail bikes and I was working at a pharmaceutical company and there was a big riding group there. He thought if I could build something on your car so you could bring bikes home to me and so I would take the wheel off, he showed me how to do that, take the wheel off, put the wheel on the car, put the bike on the top and clamp it on there. You bring them home and I'll clean them and you take them back the next day. And I think he charged $20 a bike and that was a deal for them. And then we made business cards for him and I passed the business cards out and yeah, I got very busy. I didn't know how he was gonna get them all done, but yeah, he's, he's just always taken things a step farther. He wants more. And it's never at anybody's expense. That's what I think I'm the proudest of. And yeah, he treats everybody the same, whether it's the guy who comes to pick up the trash or sweep his floor or somebody's buying his company. They're all good people. It's funny, you know, I have, uh, I have some interesting memories about being here I remember my parents being married and that was cool. I really liked that. I remember when, um, I remember when like, I remember when all was normal. Like I had mom at home and dad worked and everything was like established, you know? Everything was standard and good and whole. I didn't worry about any of that stuff. And I remember that part being really good. And then I remember all that kind of breaking and then, you know, shortly after, we only lived here for probably maybe two or three years, and then they divorced. My dad moved across the railroad tracks. When I say across the railroad tracks, that's exactly what I mean. It is like across the tracks. There's the train right there. That was a rough neighborhood. It's probably still a rough neighborhood. And, um, you know, but that neighborhood had a lot more cars, so I could detail more, so that's good. High, high density meant more, more detailing, that was good. But, um, but then there was nobody else home after school, and I, I think that that was sort of the, uh, you know, Don Henley has that song, uh, The End of the Innocence. That was kind of what this, this house was the end of the innocence kind of for me. It was a very interesting time, that's for sure, and coming back here feels pretty nostalgic. 
So here at South County Cyclery, this is where I, you know, I've been buying stuff from, from Jim here for uh, years and years and years and years and years. <laughs> Jim had a super busy little bike shop, right? And he was one year in business. Funny enough, I just heard that he started in 78 and we started hanging out in 79. We have a great selection of BMX bikes from Fit Company and Haro. He, uh, he would let me assemble these new bikes out of the box instead of paying for the stuff. So it was obviously really good for me because I'd come in here and need all kinds of stuff. When the bicycle repair and cleaning business got moving, that little trade out deal got pretty good. And, uh, and man, what an opportunity. This kid, who I just looked up to Jim so much. He's just totally bigger than life guy. So funny and just absolutely full of beans all the time always calling everyone names and dropping f-bombs everywhere and i was like oh that's awesome you know i'm 10 years old he's the funniest guy in the world so south county cyclery now called buy my bikes here in san juan capistrano this is a big part of the history of my life and our little business so check this out so over these years you know i had this little bicycle repair business turned into a little more of a detailing business and uh and i owe you one for for letting me in here and I'm a little punk shit and you let me come in here and build bikes and it was pretty cool he that- He was a little punk. Yeah. I was. I was like, Jim, Jim, well, Jim. Well, he was always a smart ass. That's why I liked him. <laughs> <laughs> so 33052 Seabreeze Court is where my dad uh, eventually moved and that would have been early 80s and this little neighborhood here is where I really got into doing a lot of car washing and a lot of detailing. This was more entrepreneurial because the other the other stuff that I do like jumping in and out of dumpsters and trash cans you know, that's, that was one thing but it wasn't exactly entrepreneurial you know that was just me you know getting paid five cents a can you know you know and not being afraid to get dirty. This, this was where, you know, started putting out advertisements and really getting into, um, you know, networking with neighbors and having, having one neighbor talk to another neighbor and say, hey, you know that person? They have a nice car. Do you think that they'd be interested in a detail? That would be really cool if you just let them know. Here's, here's an extra card. So anyway, 33052 Seabreeze Court really, really started uh, really a, more of a professional detailing business. Every day after school, I'd come home and I was washing cars and waxing them and, and getting into detailing a whole lot more than before when I would do it every now and then. I know Adam from when he was a little guy. <laughs> I watched him detail cars, you know, build his business, taking care of the neighborhood. I've known him a long time. I'd come over here and you're always so it's super engaging, super articulate, and just, you know, interested in this little kid across the street doing doing business. So we, we'd, we'd hang out and talk, you know. We probably spent a lot of time right about here you know what? shooting the breeze. And he turned me on to some stuff, you know, that I had to take care of my car and this and that and the other. Yeah, yeah it was great. Yeah. yeah. I can't tell you how cool it is that I look inside your house today and you're sitting there. That's really cool. Thanks for coming out to say hi. It's no, just, thank you for saying hi. Yeah. You know? It's cool. It's, a, it, it, it's been a kind of a boring day because, you know, whatever, I wasn't doing much. Yeah. And this kind of perked me up. <laughs> Well, that's you know, good. Well, that's, that's cool. That's way cool. Yeah. So welcome to Dana Hills High School, class of 1990. So I had a pretty busy business uh, when I first started here at Dana Hills High School. And I, I really found myself in, a, in kind of a cool spot. And I was friends with everybody. I wasn't friends with just the cool kids or not the cool kids. I was friends with the not cool kids. I was friends with the cool kids. I was not in any clique. I was in every friend group. And um, I guess it was kind of cool. One of the things that was cool is that I was respected probably just because I had a little business going. And I also had this fleet business and then I started really focusing on how to do the vehicles in shorter periods of time using a better system. And it helped me get my head around efficiency and not being redundant and making sure that I can do everything in as few steps as possible because I'm paying these guys, you know, by the hour to detail these cars. So I want to be, I want to get it down to as little as possible. So. Once I realized I better dang do something to get into college, then applied to USC. And uh, for some stroke of luck, I got accepted with zero scholarship money and a lot of debt. So I went, uh, got accepted to USC, went away to college, detailed my butt off through college, had an absolute blast in college. Oh my gosh, I will never be okay 
up here because of college. It was a blast. Uh, so they, so they tell me. I don't remember much of it. And I had so many older friends, like that guy Steve we just talked to. You know, that, I mean, I, I met so many people that I would ask questions and I just drill people for, you know, hey, what about this? What do you think about this? What do you own oh, your business? How do you do this? You know, I'm this kid, and they, but my friends today are still, you know, you know, I, I have some friends my age, but I have a ton of friends that are older that you know have been through a lot of stuff and they've seen a lot and they have a lot of great feedback and I don't know I think that was really a uh, that was beneficial okay Dirk well isn't it cool to be back with you today you know what is today is Dirk today February 5th 2020 is exactly 20 years since our very first day at the swap meet. And uh, I took you out to the swap meet one Saturday, too, way too early, to go see if we could sell some Dirt stuff. Now, Dirt Dave here uh, and I have known each other since, I don't know, 83 or 84 or something. At, like least, at least that early, yeah. yeah. So Dave started Dirt Real stuff, or Dirt Shiny stuff, and then it became all the dirt stuff. All dirt stuff. After college, after I so I used dirt products for 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 design for my whole life since I was a little kid, and um, I used them through you know elementary school, through junior high, through high school, through college, and even after that, and after trying to sell real estate and try to deal with stuff, it didn't. I hated it. <laughs> I'm like, Dur, what are you doing? Are you selling this stuff, serious? And he's like, Yeah, you know, I'm doing pretty good, doing okay. All of a sudden, he says, let's go do the swap meet, you know, and I go, man, you know, I'm already kind of busy. Yeah. And we, that was early. We had to be there at like 5.30 in the morning, and yeah. I had to bottle all the stuff for the, I was doing my own bottling, and he was always there, this guy, I mean, you know. You gotta and, do it. And well, well, here's crazy. Check this out, Dave. There's our yeah. very first day. Oh, that's amazing, yeah. And then this is just, you know, like two, two or three bottles of each product, maybe. Hopefully we didn't sell too much. <laughs> yeah. We didn't have much inventory. That's right. You, first of all, you say, feel that. Go ahead, feel that. I had to be signed, feel me. I got, a, I got a picture in there. Yeah, I got the feel me sign right, yeah, in the yeah, yeah, right yeah. there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, the feel me sign, everyone would walk up and feel it. Go, hey, that's nice. Well, yeah, well, watch this. David would walk up, spray paint it, take a piece of road tar, rub a bunch of black road tar over it. People are just going, <laughs> That alone bothered him, yeah. The camera, like, that's so crazy. And then he squirt a whole bunch of lighter fluid on it. Yeah. And, <laughs> and <laughs> light it on fire. People are just going, whoa! I know, they, 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 like, they couldn't believe this guy was doing it. They couldn't believe it. And I never in a million years would have thought to go sell my own car care products. I never would have thought, you could bottle this. You could do this. Right. And I just want to tell you, buddy, thank you, because... I guarantee you, 100%, I would not be here today if it wasn't for you. It really is true. And oh, that's I very just, kind of you I, to say, Adam. I am so grateful. I really am. I can't tell you how much, buddy. It's just like you're amazing. And I well, I am you. proud of you. I am really proud of you. You have well, taken this to a whole new level that I couldn't do. You're a good man. You're a good you're man. You're the best man. Thanks, Dirk. Thanks I for so you. many years, brother. You're <laughs> awesome. You're a good man. <laughs> Do a boogie down dance after that. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> music. Ladies <laughs> night. <laughs> Ladies <laughs> night. <laughs> so, Wayne, I'm really glad to see you today. This is cool that we were able to hang out all these years later, 20 years later. And um, I always look to you like the most organized, buttoned up, I mean, just by the letter business guy. You held your, your staff meetings religiously. Everyone had their KPIs. So in business, you know, when I just started off, you were really like one of my original mentors because you had such a buttoned up, dialed in, organized business. And um, I appreciate that. And I'm grateful to tech for that. Yeah. It's, it's really cool talking to Joe about what does Wayne mean to you? And I go, the more I think about it, he means a lot more than I have given you credit over the years because uh, <laughs> you really helped make things, you know, smooth when I when I could use a uh, a very mature ha -ha, <laughs> voice of. Uh, oh, we know, had fun back then. We, we sure fun. did have fun. Yeah. When I came in and became your 
your neighbor and then moved in to the place. Did you, did you know that I was living in that place? Yes. Oh, yeah, I knew. I remember when you put the shower in. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, and we would talk sometimes about how uh, uh, darn cold it would get in there at night. Oh, yeah. Wow. Wow, this is wild. Crazy. Well, there was a wall right here, a doorway right here. You'd walk in here, at a desk back there. Had my collection of old vintage car care products right here. Had the 62 Corvette parked right here. And right here against this wall was, was our shelving. And Dano built all those shelves. Dano built the display for all the old polishes and waxes as well. This is such a trip. Oh my gosh. Up here is where I lived for three years. Oh, there's a water heater here now. Anyway, this, this is where I had the shower. Oh, and I put these here. No way. So the shower was there and this is where I had all my clothes. So I, had, I put a dowel right there, across there. I, I put all these in, and uh, that's where I just kept my clothes hanging. And back here at the edge, I had uh, a double bed. But buddy, what a blast from the past. It's been many years since we've been here. It's been many, many years. Yeah. It's a trip. I wonder if it's Amazon or online, you know, e-com or, or what's changed, but boy, it's different. Well, you pulled your booth out of here. <laughs> <laughs> you, your booth, your booth. Oh, that's funny. So this is our spot right here. Under B-175, see this? We did B-177, 175, 173. We used to sneak cars in and out of this gate. Remember that? Yeah, to, like, yeah oh, to detail. I got this car. I don't know what. To, I'm like, where's the car? <laughs> yeah. Pull it up. And I believed in the products because they work. Like, you don't, you don't, it doesn't take any selling when people see it work on their own vehicle, right? Um, I just basically copied your style with people too. I didn't, I didn't invent anything. It's like, show them on their dang car. There were a few taglines. There were a few. Yeah, right. By the way, rougher than a night in jail, that came from Mike Wilson. I got that from that guy right there. Credit where credit's due. And then how long do you think you were there before Ashley started working there? Wow. I think she came on pretty quick after, after we... Uh... She was a teenager, man. Really? Yeah, she was a teenager. She's amazing. Well, Ashley was a huge part. Yeah. She was just a kid, and she'd come out here and work the swap meet with me, and then uh, when we first started off, I. Was, I think you probably showed her how to do the demo, and then we would we would kind of do a little friendly competition during the day to see who could sell more. Yeah, right? exactly. And um, and <laughs> I'd always try and I'd always try and get just a little more sales than her, and I'd yep. send people to her when I was higher or whatever. Yep. And then what happened was I couldn't keep up with her. Dude, she she outsold oh, yeah. me like consistently. Yep. She's just amazing, <laughs> man. So. It was really cool to see. I am Ashley Wilson. I met Adam Patali through my dad, Mike Wilson. Um, my dad was helping Adam at the Orange County Swap Meet. And at the time I was finishing up high school, so I came in to help them on the weekends uh, when they were doing the Swap Meet uh, along with the fair. I feel that this whole business is a sum of all the people that, that made it flow, especially in the early days, because it's, it's, I don't want to say it's easy now, but it's a heck of a lot easier that we have, you know, a decent sized business. But man, in the early days, it was, it was because of you, because of her, because of Dano who kept the doors open. It's like, I feel so, I, I feel like without you and without her, without these people, this never would have happened. You know, I just, I, I'm so grateful. And I think that if any takeaway I have from, from, this 20 years in business is that without you guys and a, and a handful of other people who really made it all happen, it wouldn't have happened. And I, you know, there's no, oh, Adam, you, you did. I, 
I attracted wonderful people. And uh, that's why we're here today. It's so amazing. Dano, I mean, I can't tell you, you really saved, saved my butt. You did. I, if, if you had not been there, I mean, I mean, obviously my trust for, in you is perfect. I have a hundred percent trust in you, you know, and you know, being one of my best friends, it's like, it was so easy to say, yeah. And you, it just so happened that you were like, and, and I we talk about God's plan. You were, printing. you were yeah. just about to be, you were just between two things yeah. and it was just like, you just had a little window and I'm like, yeah. Dano, what do you want to make? Yeah. Done. Okay. Um, here's this. And I can remember, I can remember sitting at, uh, sitting at Hennessy's and you telling me about <clears throat> that you were going to start selling products to do detailing with. And I, I can remember clearly thinking, I think commercial real estate might be a better, like, <laughs> I just want to let that play out a little bit more. <laughs> but then, like, after seeing you, like, the first, you know, one of those first weekends, like, like, you know, it's just been, like, sheer force of will that you, yeah. you have pushed this thing along, like, because I, otherwise, I, yeah, I, I, I counted you out a few times, like, oh, he's, this, <laughs> this ain't going to go very well. This is, gonna, <laughs> this is going down, but, like, yeah, like, seriously, like, sheer force of will just, Push it forward. Uh, the company grew and grew and grew. I left and went to school, started my real estate business for a little bit, and about three or four years later called Adam and said, do you have any opportunities? And he did. I was basically doing all sales up until a couple years into him being in, in, the Col in Colorado. Live chat, also I did live chat, I did retail, I answered all the phones, and uh, wholesale. Yeah, he genuinely cares so much about his customers and always have. I mean, genuinely, genuinely cares so much about them. So I think they felt that and feel it, and that's where it becomes more than just car care products. Yeah. I have some people that I've worked with that, um, that I just feel a, a total just gratitude, real gratitude for, for the time that we spent together and the time that all, all you gave to us. And um, and I just feel like there's something there's something that you gave entirely of yourself as and what you gave of yourself for this business helped us be where we are here today, and I just can't thank you enough. And I feel I feel this this deep deep gratitude. I appreciate that. I think we did it as a team, and I want to thank you for all that I learned. I think one of the biggest things that you taught me is how to treat customers and treat people. And um, I learned so much through all the years, and to watch your company start at almost nothing and grow to what it is today is really awesome. And you definitely have been through a lot, and but it's been awesome, and I appreciate it. The people that I've spent that I've had surrounding me, we've been absolutely fortunate as heck to have some incredible people in our world, in our business, as my friends. You know, I think that my focus overall is that people are great. There's just so many great people in the world. And if you focus on that, focus on how great people can be, how great people are, I think you'll find, I think I found myself at least surrounded by an overwhelming majority of really great people.